I think that uh, the last time we talked yeah. that neither Washington nor Oregon was a part of the Big Ten. <laughs> so who but knows by this time now. next week who will be. Yeah, really. But that's two more prominent schools. Uh, you know, if you really look at the list of of big time schools and brands in the conference, and it's getting to be eight, nine, ten deep now. Uh, like, you know, probably next week when we talk, North Carolina and Florida State will be uh, members of Big Ten. So <laughs> that's just kind of the way things are going. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, look at uh, – I mean, it's crazy. Obviously, I, well, in my point of view, I, I didn't want Oregon or Washington, but I, I don't have anything to do about it. I don't have any say in it. Um, so now you've got 18 teams, uh, but you look at that footprint that the Big Ten now has. I mean, you add the Pacific Northwest. So the only thing that you don't have a Big Ten footprint in is Texas or, or, or Florida. Um, so in my mind, it's made a civil war. I mean, just look at it. Um, North versus South now, uh, SEC versus Big Ten. And, uh, you know, the SEC says that they're standing pat right now. I want to see, you know, how, how it goes. But obviously, they have to add more teams now, too. Um, but, you know, to me, you know, you know, Nebraska got into the Big Ten. I mean, what are we talking about? 2011? Um and, you know, you had a nice piece of the pie, but now you have to start sharing all this revenue with a bunch of new teams. Um, so, I, you know, obviously they're going to get more TV money out of this as it is. But, you know, I mean, the Big Ten just flexing their muscle. And, I mean, it's crazy. You look at the Pac-12 that lost six teams last week. And, uh, you know, they're down to, you know, four now. And, uh, you know, somebody's got to want Stanford. I mean, seriously, or, or Stanford may have to go independent. I think, in my mind, that, that might be their best choice. But, you know, you leave Stanford and, and you know, another digit uh, academic school of Cal out of things. And, you know, I don't think those two schools want to have anything to do with the Big 12. Um, but it, it's just college football has changed forever now. And we're never going to see what we used to see. And, you know, I don't know if it's for the better or for the worse after all of this. Do you, whether it's you personally or Nebraska fans, based on the ones that you hear from or Nebraska media, have any interest in seeing Nebraska play Washington and Oregon? Well, we've played them before. I mean, sure. and there's nothing wrong about playing them um i'll say this you know if you have to go play at at washington boom you fly to seattle you're there um if you want to play oregon you got to fly to portland and then drive three hours um <laughs> and you know it, it, there's it is what it is i, I don't mind Adding new destinations is all fine with me. I mean, places I've been to before, but I do enjoy going out there. And um, the more the merrier. I mean, it's all about making money, TV revenue, and that's the day and age that we're in right now. And you know, we're just gonna have to wait until it's all all said and done, and everybody's loaded up. You know, at least the 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 big. Big Ten and the SEC are loaded up with 20 teams apiece, and um, we'll just kind of go from there. We have posted videos on the main channel, the national channel, that uh, go through the various uh, histories of all these schools that are switching conferences. And so actually, I just had to dust this one off because I projected Oregon to the Big Ten, not that a zillion other people didn't as well. Uh, but Oregon to the Big Ten, Washington to the Big Ten months ago. And so I just have to kind of update those videos because basically I went back in time. And as Greg alludes to, of course, Nebraska had a series uh, home and home with Oregon about 10 years ago. And they played Washington home and home. And what was interesting about this, about 20 years ago, 2002, 2003, they played Washington two consecutive years and sandwiched in between. They played a bowl game. So they played them three times in two years and uh, just went through. 
uh, Washington's history against the Big Ten, Oregon's history against the Big Ten, recent history. It didn't go back to 1938, uh, but the last 20 years. And then kind of projecting forward how I see those programs and how they would do in the Big Ten. So check out those videos over on the national channel. Yeah, you know, and it, it, it's really it's unique to see what the Big Ten is doing and adding these iconic programs that um, obviously nobody wants to stay in the Pac-12 anymore. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're taking, you know, after USC and UCLA had already announced, then Colorado was like, yeah, we're out of here. And so, you know, everybody else scrambles around Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, all heading to the Big 12. And, um, you know, so why not have the Big 10 add those two iconic programs? And they are iconic programs in, in the college football landscape. And, you know, it just flexes their muscle because obviously we all know that, you know, they're fighting against the SEC to be the big dog. And uh, right now, obviously, I think the Big Ten has really made a statement. And, um, you know, we'll see how the SEC counters it. And you see all across, you know, the ACC, people want out of there now. And um, it's just it, – it's crazy what we're looking at. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised next week, like I said earlier, if North Carolina and Florida State are all of a sudden members of the Big Ten. Um, just the way things are going. But, I, I, you know, in my mind, I think Florida State doesn't want to be in the Big Ten. They want to be in the SEC. But uh, we'll see. But the Big Ten is after that Charlotte market is, is what my point is. Yeah, it is definitely a growing market. Yeah, absolutely. Charlotte's exploding. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, for as much as the Big Ten has gobbled up ground and TV sets with all these moves – a move to the Southeast would not be yeah. bad, would not and, be a bad thing. And, and you know, I mean, the, the SEC is locked in with ESPN and, and they're, they're out of money too. So it, it's kind of hard to see them uh, making any moves uh, this season right now. At, at the time that the television deal by the big 10 was cut with, of course, the existing one with Fox is continuing, but with NBC and CBS, Greg and I had the conversation and, and uh, we did on other shows and so forth about the genius of the NFL type model that the Big Ten is uh, has taken on with the uh, the layers of networks showing games throughout the day. And then they're all going to be previewing the other games. So NBC is going to be showing a game or they're a bad example because they're going to be at the end. But Fox is going to be showing a game at noon, but also telling you go to CBS at three thirty and then go to yeah. NBC at seven thirty. And it's almost like an NFL. When you watch the NFL games, they have contracted the the NFL. Go to the Peacock Peacock at at 11. Yes, the the, the NFL forces, exactly, in the Big Ten Network. uh, Because back in the old days, these these networks would not mention each other. They would, it was like, it was like forbidden to mention another network. But basically the NFL at some point said, you have to mention, if you want to sign the contract with us, you're going to tell people where our other games are. So yeah. now it's, and so the Big Ten has basically done the same thing to say, you're go- we're going to be promoted on all these networks all day, whether our game's on right at that second or not. And we're leaving out the Big Ten network as well with that. Yes, exactly. And, yeah. uh, and, and to your point, Greg, uh, while the cable distribution is shrinking, and has roughly shrank from shrunk from let me use my proper uh, term there shrunk from like 112 million distribution to uh, well let me let me phrase that right and let me get this correct at one point ESPN went over 100 million homes out of 113 at the time so they had passed the 90 percent saturation point now they're down into the low 80s 70s somewhere in that range cable boxes are going away yeah they're going away and homes are going away but people will still be able to watch the big 10 over the air right exactly 
And I mean, you know, like kind of mentioned that ESPN kind of blew what they had. I mean, you know, offering as much as they offered to get the SEC exclusively like they did. Um, now you see the aftermath of that is where they're laying off a bunch of longtime tenured uh, employees that, that had huge audiences uh, because they're out of money. And, um, you know, the Big Ten really out – played them i mean if you're playing chess i mean they did a checkmate on them there uh, a couple months ago um when they well whenever they did their whole deal with with nbc and cbs and and the whole shebang so um somebody was thinking uh, ahead um and i don't think it was espn 